Northwood students. Today we're going to talk about exercise memories. You will need journal paper, markers or crayons and a pencil, and your alphabet linking chart to do this today. All right, get your materials ready and let's get started. Hello, Northwood students. Uh, I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to tell someone about something that happened to you? Maybe you wanted to tell someone about a new friend you made or a park you went to, or maybe some new shoes that you bought, or maybe you want to tell someone uh, about a trip you went on or how you have a new brother or you had a new sister. Um, there are so many things that happen in our lives that we can remember and tell people about. We use these cool parts in our brain that store memories kind of like a treasure box. Think of like a treasure box with all of your important memories, things that have happened in your life inside. And sometimes we can take those memories out or our special treasures and share them with others. Sometimes though, we have to think a little bit more about our memories to remember all the details and tell people everything that happened. Then we share those memories with others for fun, to connect with other people, or to help someone else, or to even teach something, something to someone based off of what we learned from what we did in our life. Today, we are going to use our memories from deep inside that treasure box of a brain you have to share with others for fun. Our learning target today is I can share a memory. The memory we're going to share today is about exercise. So our learning target is actually kind of, I can share an exercise memory. Say that with me. I can share an exercise memory. Great. That's what we're going to practice today. But first, it is my turn. So put on your tentoscopes, put on your listening ears and listen, and watch what I'm about to do. So first it's my turn, which means that I need to think of what my memory is. What have I done with exercise that I can remember? Hmm. Oh, I have an idea. I found an idea in my brain that I thought of one time, um, a long time ago, before any of you were ever born. Probably before your brothers and sisters were born too. Like 16 years ago, I joined the army. And this is a true story, guys. This is true from my memories. So, so about 16 years ago, I joined the army. And I went to basic training. And they made me do so many exercises. I was the most tired I have ever been in my entire life when I was in basic training. Oh, man, I'm just thinking about some of the things I had to do. I'm remembering, I'm remembering all of the details. They made me do so many push-ups, so many push-ups. We ran all the time. We ran and marched everywhere. After we ate dinner, they would take us to this hill and make us run up and down the hill until the first person would throw up. That was disgusting. So disgusting. I'm thinking of so many memories that I have from exercising and at basic training. Oh no, here they all come. The drill sergeants would say, front leading rest position, move. And then they would make us do so many push-ups. Run faster, soldier, run faster. I swear that's what they were saying all the time. More push-ups. Sometimes we even had to do push-ups in the dirt and sand. We'd get filthy. Boy, was I exhausted in basic training. Wow, what a fun and powerful memory. Now, I, I'm going to draw about it. I need to think of all of the details of my memory, everything that I could remember, and try to get them in my drawing today. So I'm going to change my camera angle a little bit so that you can see my journal paper up and close as I'm drawing today. 
All right, so I have my journal paper here for me to start drawing my memory. And just a reminder, the first thing we're going to do is, whoop, first thing we're gonna do is draw, then we're going to write about what we drew, and then we are going to write our name. So we're going to start first with drawing our picture. So remember I said earlier, I'm thinking of all of the details from my memory of when I exercised in basic training. So one of the things I remembered most was I remembered having to do push-ups. I had to do so many push-ups. So I'm gonna try to draw a picture of me. I have my head, I'm gonna have my back and body. And then when you do push-ups, your legs are down on the ground and your your hands and arms are down on the ground too. All right. And then I need to add in probably my shoes. I had black shoes. And then I, um, I had to wear a bun in my hair. So let me, I had brown hair, still have brown hair. And I had to wear this bun in my hair. Oh, that's too high. It's supposed to be down low. Oh, well, good enough. All right. Then I need probably some eyes and probably my eyebrows, maybe a nose, a little nose here. And then I was probably really, really tired, right? So I'm gonna get kind of a frown face because I'm super tired from all of these, these push-ups. All right, now I know that I wore black shorts. We had to wear black shorts when I was in the army. So I'm gonna draw some black shorts here. All right, so my black shorts. And then we wore gray shirts, but I don't think I have any gray right now. So since I don't have any gray, I'm just gonna use a different color. Um, I'm going to use this kind of tan color, but we wore gray shirts. So I'm going to kind of put those here like this. All right. So there's that. Oh, I probably need some fingers, some hands. I'm going to add some hands here. All right. All right. Got my hands. So that's me doing push ups. But remember, one of my biggest memories, one of the main details was the drill sergeants. There were so many of them and they had these big hats that had this big round brim. So I'm going to draw a drill sergeant over here. So they were pretty much always standing. And I like to say they were like barking orders at us almost all of the time. So I'm going to get some eyes, maybe a little nose. And then they hardly ever smile. They don't smile very much. Usually when a drill sergeant smiles, that's not a good thing. So I'm going to put like a straight face, like, I mean business, listen to me. All right. Now, pretty, almost all of my drill sergeants had like no hair. So I'm not going to put any hair in them, but I am going to put a big greenish kind of colored hat right here. All right. So I'm going to draw this kind of green hat like this. That's kind of, it kind of works. It's not perfect. Remember though, at preschool and any time in life, we just, we just do our best work. That's what we do. That's how we get better. We practice, we do our best work and we should be proud of ourselves when we do our best work. So that's what I'm doing. It's not perfect, but it's doing okay. All right. Now these colors don't work too well for the uniforms that we wore, but we'll make it work anyway. So I'm going to put a uniform on this drill sergeant here. Alrighty, whoops. Let's just color it in. I can always make it camouflage later. All right, get this uniform on. Remember, I'm going faster because I'm trying to get this done so you guys can see, see what it's supposed to look like, all right? I'll put some, some boots down here, some boots. Okay, now I'm gonna need um, need some kind of camouflage looking print in here, right? So get some camo, some camo in here. Trying to make it look a little camouflaged. Okay, and now um, I probably need this person, this drill sergeant, um, since they were usually yelling 
I should probably have them like yelling at me. So to do that, I'm going to make a speech bubble right here. And a speech bubble is what's used in illustrations, like in books and drawings sometimes to tell a reader when someone is saying something in the picture. So this means since the arrow, that little triangle sticking out part is pointing to that face, that means they are the ones speaking this. So I'm going to write in here, um, give me 20. All right. He's saying, give me 20 push-ups, soldier. Private, get down there and give me 20 push-ups is what he's yelling. So there we go. So this is my exercise memory. I remember being at basic training with drill sergeants, always telling me to do push-ups and all sorts of exercises. Hmm. Oh, wait. There's more. I forgot the next step. First, we draw our picture, but then we have to write about our picture. I almost forgot. All right, so let's look down here back at my picture. Now, what is it I'm going to write about? Hmm, let's see. I'm gonna write the sentence, I did push-ups. I'm going to write the sentence, I did push-ups. When you get to this part, you might want to use a pencil because a pencil has an eraser. So if you make a mistake, um, it's easier to erase it and start over. However, pencil doesn't show up very well on here when I write. So it's hard. it'll be hard for you to see it. Uh, so instead, I'm going to use a marker, but this might be a time that you want to use a pencil. All right, so my sentence is, I did push-ups. You know what? Let's clap out that sentence, all right? Let's clap it out. It's gonna go like this. I did push ups. Those are the words in the sentence. Clap those out with me. I did push ups. Four claps means there are gonna be four words. So let's start with the very first word. The first word is I. Well, that's pretty easy because I know that I is a letter and that letter makes it sound. It makes its name. So I know that I need I like in ice cream, ice cream. So I'm going to write the letter I. That's going to be my first part. When I start writing, I always start on this side, the very left side at the top. So I'm going to make my I. All right. Now I need my second word in my sentence. The first word was I. Let's see. I like. Oh, I need the word like, like. Now I'm gonna stretch out the word like. You can do this with me. Rub your hands together like this. And we're gonna stretch out the word like super slowly, stopping and listening to the sounds. Here it goes. Like, like. Okay, now when I stretch it out, I'm going to stop at the first sound to figure out what sound I need first in this writing. All right. So we're going to stretch out like again, stopping at the first sound. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Let's look at the linking chart. Ooh. What letter makes a sound? Ooh. Now I know that leaf, leaf starts with the sound ooh. So that means I'm going to need the letter L. L is the letter that I need. So I'm going to put a space because I'm making a new word. I'm going to make the L over here. L. All right. Now let's stretch out that word like again to see what other sounds we hear. All right. Oh, I, I, I. Ha! It's the letter I again. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's put down the letter I again. Here it goes. I. All right. Let's stretch out like again. There's another sound in that word. Ready? Oh, hold on. Oh, like. Ooh, this one's tricky. This one's tricky. Now let's look at our linky chart and see if we can find a picture that starts with k. cat. Cat starts with k. You might need that letter. But there's also another picture that starts with k. kite. Kite starts with k. So I might need a kite or might need the letter k. Now I'll tell you later in kindergarten, you'll learn this rule, but in this word, um, instead of C, cause C makes K, K also makes K, we're actually gonna use K 
the letter K in this word because it comes after an I, after an I. So that's why we're gonna use K and not C. All right, so what we're gonna do is go here next to the I, we're gonna make K. Now, those were the only three sounds we could hear in like. But like I said, um, I've said this before, there are lots of rules in our language, especially in spelling. Now, in the word like, there's a special letter at the end. It's the letter E, and it's called a bossy E or a magic E. And that E makes other letters say their name, makes other vowels. So in this word, the reason why I says its name and doesn't say I is because like there's a E, there's a bossy E at the end of this word that makes I say its name. If there wasn't an E, this would be lick, but it'll be spelled wrong because there isn't a CK, which you'll learn about that in kindergarten too. Let's not get ahead of ourselves today. So this word is like here. I have I like. Now remember, you're, you're in preschool, right? You're not 30 some years old like me. So I know how to write some of these words perfectly, but that's because I've had a lot of practice writing since I was a little kid. And you need to have that practice too. That means sometimes your writing is not gonna be perfect. It's gonna be your best work. And our best work is what helps us get better. So the more you practice, even if it's not 100% right, the better you are going to get. You're not supposed to be able to write every word yet. You're only four or five, maybe three years old. You don't need to be writing all these words yet. You have to do your best. You got it. Oh, goodness. I better hurry up. We're making, taking too long on this sentence. All right. So I have I like. Now I need push up. P -p 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 push up. The first sound is P for P. And now this word is a little tricky because it has some sounds in it that are harder. So I'm going to finish writing push. I have I like push. And now I need ups. Uh. Uh, uh, that's the sound that ah, you makes like an umbrella. So I need a uh, for umbrella. Put, I like push ups. Oh my goodness. I just realized what I did. I wrote, I like push ups and not I did push ups. What in the world was I thinking? I don't really like push ups that much anymore. <sighs> We're going to stick with it, though. All right. I like push up. P -p -p. That's a P. And we need one letter at the end. I like push ups. What letter makes a sound? S <gasps> That's right. We have the sound S for S. And I'm going to put a period at the end. And this says, I like push ups. I remember. I was supposed to write, I did push-ups, but for some reason, my brain wanted to tell me that I like push-ups today. I'm not sure I believe it, but maybe that's what the drill sergeant was thinking. All right, so here is my memory. I have, give me 20 push-ups, because that's what I remember from exercising. I remember having to exercise at basic training, and the drill sergeant's always telling me to do push-ups. And then I wrote about it at the bottom. But remember, I said there were three steps. First, we draw the picture. We write about the picture and then we write our name. So I'm gonna write my name up here at the smiley face. I'm gonna write Miss Ashley. Now I'll be honest, I'm writing sideways. This is rather tricky. All right, and there is my name. Now today you are going to have a turn to do the same thing you're going to draw and write about your exercise memories. Hmm. Maybe you have a memory of doing exercises at home, like going for a walk around your house, going for a hike, or going for a hike. Maybe you ride a bicycle or a tricycle. Maybe you've gone running before. Maybe you do jumping jacks. Maybe you've gone swimming. What's the time that you've exercised? I want you to think about it for a little bit. Think of all the details, every part of that memory. Dig it out of that treasure box of memories in your brain, pull it out and try to remember every single detail. Once you have an idea about what you want to draw for your exercise memory, go ahead and start drawing on your journal paper. When you're done, you're going to write about your, your drawing at the bottom, then write your name on top too. 
If you are doing this, I want you to make sure to take a picture of it and send it to your teachers on Seesaw too, so they can see all of your fabulous work today. All right, guys, I hope you have a fun time with your exercise memories, and I can't wait to see all of your awesome drawings. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye.